Hi everybody and welcome to our traditional Ask Tatiana live. I am very happy that you are here. Good day, good evening, good night, buenas noches. Всем um, привет. That's really great that you could join me today. Today we have a little bit unusual time. Usually we met always a little bit earlier in the day. At least it was a German time earlier and today it's already 6 p.m. German time, very late evening and we have already very, very dark outside and it's absolutely cold and rainy, so real Christmas weather. Uh, I hope very much that at your place you have it a little bit more cozy and uh, more holiday-like. Maybe you even, even have snow or maybe you have 40 degrees plus and summer. Um, so where whichever whether you have a hope very much that you can enjoy it and you are maybe already ready for the holidays for coming christmas and new year um today as usual i'm ready to answer all your questions you can write them to me in the chat section And um, I'll try to answer as many of them as possible. Um, sometimes it works very well. Sometimes if there are too many, uh, there is a little bit less time. But we'll do our best. We'll see. I would like to start um, during your writing me your messages. Um, I would like to start with one question that I've got from um, from James, uh, one of my patrons. Um, he sent me today the question. I just read it. Um, what is your favorite genre or do you cross over different kinds and types of music? In other words, what sparks an interest in pieces of music? And if it is good to work on several or on many different pieces at once, or is it more make more makes more sense to work first at one and then to switch to another one? So, James, to your question, um, actually, I'm coming from class from classic from classical area, and I spend the most of my life playing classical music. But at this point, um, don't forget, classic could be also very, very different. Classic is not only Bach or Sor. Um, Pizzola is also classic Latin American music. Many, many pieces from Latin America belong also to classical areas. So classic itself, classical guitar music could consist from many, many different styles already. So actually... I enjoyed for a long, long time mainly classic, but uh, from the last few years, as we um, made our project, our crossover project with Tatiana and the Gentleman, um, where we mix classic jazz and pop, actually three absolutely different styles, three completely different worlds and if you meet the people from these worlds you see that actually um, they, the way of thinking the, um, what, what is important in one style is maybe less important in another one but each of these styles has so many interesting and exciting sides so we decided to combine the best parts of these three different styles in one and um, I think we are doing it not so bad at least we are very very happy with the result maybe you have already seen one of our videos Badinari by Bach or uh, last week that came out Stardust our newest video so um, Actually, it makes me a great, great joy to combine also or to play different styles of music, even if I feel absolutely at home or in classic. But this kind of crossover, um, I enjoy really a lot because, um, 
Yeah, as I said, you have the best sides from everything, and when you combine it, it could be something really, really interesting. Um, if it is, if it makes sense to work on one piece at once, or it's better to to work on several pieces uh, parallel, it depends on how much time you have, and. Um, it would be absolutely, absolutely boring for me to work only on one piece. So I never do it. Only if I have only 10 or 15 minutes to practice, then it comes to this. But um, usually I have different pieces. I have different um, also styles, especially when we have concert with the gentleman. Then, of course, I need to prepare myself also for jazz and pop. But that is more or less um, the answer, James, on your question. Let me take a look what come else. Um, there was one question from Persian, Persian Bright. Please recommend me a classical guitar about 5,000 US dollars. And if I like it, I will send you a gift. <laughs> um, that's a really... Um, interesting question you know um person it depends also um where are you living and uh which guitars you have in the near because i know for example in uh, many different countries are uh, different luthiers and it's also for example a question to you do you like to have any um man manufacture instrument or do you like to have a luthier instrument? When we are talking about $5,000, um, there we are for sure already in the beginning section of luthier instruments, so completely handmade instruments. Um, and um, then, you know, this area, maybe, maybe it would be a little bit different to get an absolutely new instrument. In Germany, for example, when you order um, or when you want to buy a new luthier instrument, um, it starts somewhere around uh, 5,000 but euros. It's a little bit more than $5,000. And it's like a really very starting segment. Um, but around three three thousand till five thousand you can find for sure any secondhand guitar and that is what i would also recommend to you take a look around uh, maybe you have any secondhand instrument that is in top form in top um, condition no damages and everything is perfect just only the prices will be less than the new one and another good thing um, sometimes when you buy a secondhand instrument you don't need to wait so long as when you order it by luthier um, so maybe you know i play uh, the guitar by michael brook by german luthier it's a double top and of course each time i can recommend this beautiful instrument and uh, I know that Michael um, is also presented in USA. There are some dealers who who, um, who sell his instruments, so maybe you can take a look. But honestly, saying I'm not sure that you will find anything around five thousand. Um, in other way, take a look for my my uh, tip. Take a look for for any handmade luthier guitars, but a secondhand um, instrument and the year will for sure find something that suits well to you. Anyway, you need to try and need to try a lot of them and figure out what you like, what you don't like. It's a very personal thing also. Um, then next question. Um, from William. Hi, Tatiana. What do you think of self-criticism? Is it bad doing that too much or not? <laughs> um, thank you very much, William, for your question. It's really very interesting. And uh, I think, actually, if you don't make 
and if you don't have any self-criticism, it could be quite dangerous for you in the first row. Why? Because um, a healthy percent of self-criticism is something that helps us a lot. It helps to improve our skills and it helps to notice um, where are the most uh, weak points in our playing or in our presentation and how we can how we can improve them, how we just can can better. But as I said, um, you need to have a healthy percentage of it if it is too much. And um, usually we, we guitarists or we musicians, we are uh, sometimes criticized too much ourselves and then it could be a real problem because um, it puts you down and you are not able to improve yourself anymore but you are just like feeling very bad and disappointed and uh, you don't and you lose your motivation so you need to take care that you not only criticize yourself but also find good sides on you so try to keep it in balance anyway um Another question from, um, from Henry, Henry O'Connell. Um, the question is in Russian, so I will read and answer it in Russian. Um, Татьяна, расскажи, пожалуйста, о динамическом диапазоне гитары. Какое форте не считается форсированным, а пиано неразборчивым? Um, на самом деле все более-менее просто насчет форта и пиано. Форте, скажем так, всегда надо стараться извлечь по максимуму из инструмента и своих собственных возможностей. Но есть, естественно, какие-то разумные границы, которые приятны, либо не очень приятны на наше ухо. И что касается форте, есть два ограничения. Первое ограничение – это физическое, когда ты в какой-то момент не можешь просто сильнее играть и второе ограничение которое очень часто даже является первым ограничением это ограничение инструмента что инструмент не в состоянии выдать э, больше громкой звука чем чем может быть хотелось бы эм, и в данном случае как это определить довольно таки просто когда гитара начинает дребезжать то есть когда ты пытаешься играть в форте и начинается дребезг Дребезжат струны, эм, это связано с тем, что они начинают ударять по, эм, по грифу, по ладам. И получается такой звенящий, очень неприятный дребезг. Это тот самый порог, граница, который лучше не переступать, остановиться коротко, там буквально пару процентов до него. Тогда как бы будет форте максимальным, то есть максимальное, что может выдать, выдать инструмент и ты в данный момент, но при этом оно еще для слушателей будет приятно. А пиано особенно сложно эм, установить нижнюю границу, потому что она очень много зависит эм, от того, где, для кого и в каких условиях ты играешь. Потому что, например, дома в маленькой комнате занимаясь, можно сделать гораздо больше пиано и играть гораздо тише, чем, например, когда ты играешь концерт на, на 400 человек, и у тебя, например, нет микрофона, вообще нет микрофона, и в зале плохая акустика. В данном случае по ощущениям, по физическим ощущениям, пиано это вообще что-то, что должно быть просто запрещено в тот момент. И минимум, на который можно спускаться, мецо пиано, либо мецо форте даже. То есть это очень некомфортные условия, и, конечно, нижний уровень тогда очень сильно поднимается. Вот, то есть пиано зависит от комнаты в первую очередь. И во вторую очередь эм, иногда хорошо это немножко проверить, потому что когда мы играем сами, наше восприятие искаженное бывает. Хорошо иногда сделать запись и послушать, если в записи вдруг в какой-то момент очень сильно пропадает, значит, что пиано многовато, надо немножко поднять. Либо, если, может быть, даже еще более лучший вариант, позвать кого-нибудь из знакомых, друзей, учителя, коллег, проиграть этот кусочек им и спросить, насколько это еще слышно или нет. И, я думаю, получите точный ответ. Uh, so, another question. Um, from Daniela, 
Uh, hey Tatiana, my question is, what exercises do you recommend to practice agility and velocity of the AMMA combination on playing scales? Once again, what exercise do you recommend to practice agility velocity um, of the AMM? Actually, um, actually, your question is <laughs> is already more or less the answer on your question. Um, if you want to develop your AM and MA combination, develop um, exactness and velocity of these fingers, um, you have already written scales. Could be a good basic to work on scales or um, coordination exercise. If you take a look um, at Ask Tatiana video, my exercise number one, it calls, uh, they are show this uh, coordination exercise. So something where you have both hands, it could be on different strings, and then you just take your combination AM and MA, and um, you can play each note double, for example, if we have C major scale, no? Um, the first note C, you can play double. It will be C, C, then goes D, D, E, E, and so on. Just in a normal variation, then you can work on it with accent. That helps also a lot. So at one point you make an accent on A finger, M will be quieter and um, next time you do accent on M finger, so it will be A, M, A, M, and so on. Then you can work on it, you can play also with these two fingers, triple notes, so not only C, C, D, D, but C, 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 then it will be D, 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 E, 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 and so on. Um, or you just keep it like, like a single note, play C, D, and so on, and the same uh, start with accents. Accents help a lot to improve um, all fingers, all combinations. And another thing is to practice it also with a metronome, so you can control your speed much, much better, and you can then raise your speed also much better. There are the main things, um, how you can do it. <laughs> um, let's take a look at what do we have else. Robert Lee Weber. <laughs> what do you think of Renaissance lute music? Um, of course, it's a special music. Um, and absolutely for clear reasons, um, Renaissance music has, has a lot of fans and also many of my students enjoy so much to play Renaissance. Um, it has a lot, um, it based actually on dances and on absolutely another, um, feeling of time and uh, music in general, you know, if you compare it with uh, our days and with the current uh, styles. Uh, for me personal, when I started, I play some Renaissance pieces, some, some Renaissance music. Um, now it's not really on my program because now I move a little bit more around uh, Romantic classic period or uh, Latin American music of 19th century and also some modern music um, So it's a little bit um, on the side um, But who knows maybe one day it will be in the program and Yeah, my relationship to Renaissance is a little bit better than than to Scarlatti um, Another one Harsani Serena. Mm, that's a very, very good question. Hi, Tatiana. Do you believe in mental practice when you don't have your guitar around? Absolutely. Absolutely, mental practice should take place actually as often as possible. 
and it helps really really extremely what is another practice when you don't have guitar and you just imagine in your head um how you would play or what exactly you would do what would do your left hand right hand you can memorize very very well or um, keep the peace in memory much better when you work also mental for example sometimes before the concerts um, i make a short check if my memorization is okay even if if it is uh, the piece that i have already played for a long 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 time and it actually works perfectly um, many of these pieces have some strange effect as more often you play them as uh, less secure could be your memory strange but it is like that so it, so it becomes much more automatically and in this case you can check very very well where are the problem parts or if you have any problem parts if you just try to to play this piece in your mind only mental no, without using guitar, without any instrument. So you just imagine you start to play the piece in your head, you hear the sound and you imagine maybe you, you will see your hands, maybe you will see the scores in front of you. Um, just everything through imagination. And very interesting, exactly the parts where you don't know exactly in your head sometimes you play and two three four five lines you know exactly what you're doing and then comes one part and you are not sure how was it or what what is exactly at this point that your picture disappears that is a sign to take a look in the scores and prepare this part especially well because um in a critical situation a stress situation there could happen something something not so nice so it's mental training is anyway very very helpful and i could recommend it to to everybody okay what do we have um from anderola 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 um hello my sweet tatiana can i ask you why you never play the tremolo effect in pieces i would like a lot if you play required with the alhambra <laughs> um that's not true that's not really true yes i um didn't play didn't record required with the alhambra yet but i have tremolo effects in pieces for example dreams of a russian summer there was a tremolo part or the stream by Alexander Vlasenkov, there is also tremolo, La Traviata by Tariga, there is also a tremolo section. So I use tremolo, I play tremolo. Um, about requerdos, um, I have a little bit difficult relationship with this piece. Um, actually, I don't like pieces who everybody plays. In general, maybe you will wonder why why did I record it then on Dia de November or Lagrima or something like that. Um, the exceptions, they make the main rule even stronger. So Requerdas was for a long, long time one of the pieces where I thought I will never play it because everybody played it. And when it's so much around you and you hear it the whole time it's like okay maybe i don't need it um but this relationship starts to change so it can be can be <laughs> after some aging that um at one day requetas the alhambra will come also as a video or in my concert program so let's see let's stay surprised um, another question from David or David. Hello, Tatiana. What's your recommendation on practicing Bach? <laughs> uh, it depends. Of course, it depends what kind of Bach's music you play, because a fugue or a fugue is something different than than prelude or something like that 
um, or if you have a big sonata or if you play only just one part. But um, in general, Bach's music is something endless deep. And when you play Bach, you can be sure that doesn't matter how long you already work on it or how long do you play it. If it's one month, if it's half of a year, if it's 10 years or maybe 50 years, um, you will always find something new. And that is what, is it, what exactly fascinates me so much in Bach's music. Um, when you play Bach's music, in my opinion, there is the most, um, the most difficulty uh, the biggest difficulty is to keep two different kinds or two different things parallel in mind and take care parallel on these two things. First of all, it's the line. Bach used a lot of lines, no? like when you look in the square, this is this part. It. And in the same time, you need to keep in mind the vertical yeah, the chords, the harmony. And um, also something absolutely typical for Bach, it makes, it has endless long phrases that sometimes continue over three, four, five lines. But in this time, in this long, 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 long phrase, you have so many small... Um, small, small, small melodic phrases, movements that uh, have that have the same, at least the same importance that keeping this whole line. So it's not easy really to do both, but I think it's actually what, what Bach's music is living from. You know? Long block, long complicated line and very clear understanding where are you going, where is your goal. In the same time, being able to take care at smaller details and smaller phrases. But it's also something really, really fascinating. Um, um, there is also the question and that comes um, quite often. Hey Tatiana, uh, from Hectabyte. Hey Tatiana, what do you do if you accidentally break a nail by doing some daily activities? Oh. <laughs> um, as I said already before in the previous um, streamings, I try, I really try and do my best that it doesn't happen. It's um, in this problem of breaking the nail, it's really the most important tip and the most important point is not to allow it that your nail breaks. What does it mean? You need to really be careful what you're doing in your daily life, you know, in your usual life. And especially, uh, especially if you're a professional guitarist, especially if you're a professional musician, you really need to be careful with your right hand. So um, since many, many years, I have, um, I got used to do many things that could be dangerous for my nails. For example, open something, you know, for example, the door of, of the closet or um, to turn something or where I need to put my hand somewhere inside, or where I need to grab something. I got used to um, to do it with the left hand because they don't have any nails and there actually nothing can happen. Especially, especially if I know in two days or in one week I have a concert, then my alarm is on and I really try to be, to do everything thinking about it. Can I do it with the right hand or not? Or better I do it with the left hand. So it, you can avoid these problems actually that 99% of all breakings you can avoid using just this thought. If it happens, bad, very bad, 
Uh, you can use glue and uh, some silk paper if it's really very extremely and if you need to keep your nail at least for one or two days, you know, for example, if you have a concert or something really important. Um, if it's not the case, um, I usually polish it completely or at least till the point where the nail is okay and just then wait until it until it grows again and in the same time I remember when did it happen, why did it happen, what did I do that it happened and then I know next time when I need to open for example my baggage in the airport before the concert I don't do it with the right hand, I do it with the left. Um, so there is another question <laughs> um, from I lost my mind 47 do you have any UCD coming out anytime soon yes in <laughs> um, last year last year was it last year I think yes or pre last year um, we released dreams of a Russian summer um, it was my latest solo CD but in the next year coming already very very soon we are starting um, we are starting preparation and recordings of our first debut band CD. So that Jan and the Gentleman, our crossover project, um, will make its first CD. And we are really, really very exciting. We started with this. We rehearsed already a lot for this goal and um, in and the end of January, beginning of February, we started all already with the recordings in the studio. Uh, so we are looking so much to it and uh, we have absolutely great stuff, great pieces there that we have in the program and then that we want to put on our CD. And um, of course, to be able to do it, uh, we need some support because um, you know that the recordings are in the studio. They are actually not so cheap, and especially when you do it with a band, um, it's also a little bit um, bigger amount of time and everything what you need um, to to take for these recordings. So um, we are starting already supporting campaign. If you would like to support us and um, to make it. A little bit more possible for us to, to bring out this CD. Uh, we will appreciate it so much and you can do it um, on Patreon, on our Patreon page patreon.com slash Tatiana Gentleman. There you will, beside of this CD, you will find many many information also about our band, about our rehearsals, there are already uh, many videos, many behind scenes, photos and our expressions and we have really great, great um, um, group and all the guys in this project are absolutely talented and I'm really happy to work with them. So if you would like to support us and to support Next City, you will be very welcome and very, very important, everybody who will, who will be our patron at the time of release of our crossover CD, your name will be on the CD printed. So at the end, you will be able to hold your exemplar of the CD with your own name written there. And it's something, something really great and special. So, um, another question. Um, there is a question from After Rock Radio. Hello, Tatiana. I have been playing with Pic until now. How to develop Picado Payando speed and how long to do it? Thank you. Um, it's it's a very very common problem or common thing what you can struggle struggle with uh, when you played before with the pick because of course it's absolutely absolutely different technique now using pick you are using more or less your wrist and your hand and 
no finger in reality and when you play without pick the fingers and the muscles of the fingers are important why muscles muscles is actually the, the maybe the main word um, at this point because you ask how long you need to do it because everything what we do when we play works with muscles or because of muscles it means to be able to do it good we need to train them not to uh, like like in a gym like in a fitness studio and our muscles they it doesn't work like today we start and tomorrow we have such muscles so it takes time it takes um month it takes sometimes year or years to achieve a several level but what is anyway important when you want to do it um best decision to have a good teacher then you can save a lot of time and many things what you will struggle with will be solved much faster so to have a good teacher is quite quite helpful especially when you're in the beginning um, if you don't have it um, take a look um, at exercises um, that combines where you use different fingers different finger combination to be able to develop um, the velocity of the fingers and independence you need to practice different parts different couples and uh, you can do it perfect with the scales you can do it with coordination exercises if you take a look for example um, at my ask tatiana video warm up um, there you will find many helpful exercises that are made for coordination and also for the right hand and warm up second part warm up right hand could be also quite 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 helpful to you and another video um my guitar exercise number one also in ask tatiana series um, all these things but also more simple books uh, for example what i recommend also if you want to work on your technique and to develop it better there is a, a good stuff in scott tenon pumping nylon um, it's quite helpful book or if you want to do it a little bit more exactly and to have something for your whole life there is a very thick book um, by Hubert Keppel uh, called the Bible the Bible of classical guitarist technique and they will find also many 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 exercises so let's continue mm -hmm. There is a question from John, John Moylan. Would you ever play the Republic of Ireland? Some wonderful venues over here. I expect I would be front and center if you did. Um, it would be absolutely great to, uh, to come to Ireland, Republic to Ireland. And um, I have never been there and it would be really great, great experience. So if um, with the concerts, it always worked like somebody need to, need to organize them or somebody need to invite. So if you have any contacts or if you have any suggestion, you can write me an email, better email, not Facebook. Um, and we will be happy to take a look. Maybe it will work. Um, there is um, some other question. Starting classical guitar. Tulio Oliveira. Hello, Tati. My question is which method book would you recommend for an adult to start studying on classical guitar? Who? Interesting question and quite difficult question because um, the same uh, the same as with guitars, I know that in each country. Um, there are the books or the schools you can work with or that are more popular, more available. In Germany, we have um, we use some, some, some books, some, some schools by C.S. Hartog, 
for example. Uh, there were different bands, or uh, also by Teuchert. Um, they are quite helpful, uh, but um, it's good, you know, when, when you start it. My, my main recommendation, if you start it as a DAO to, to, to play the guitar, that is really good if you could find a teacher. Just for very beginning, it's very important because in the beginning you make all the settings for your whole body, for your position, for your technique. And it's important that you do it from the beginning right. No, because the mistakes or the bad things, bad habits that you will get in the beginning, it will be very difficult to to release them or to do it better after that. So I would recommend you to find any teacher, at least for the very beginning, for the basics. And then he will for sure give you the exactly um, recite which book in your country is that book for um, for working on. Um, uh, do, 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 do. I'm looking for any other question. There are so many, but <laughs> I just need to pick, uh, pick out one of it. Um, um, there is a question also in Russian. Uh, from Energy 3195. Таня в России когда ждать? Хороший вопрос, Евгений. Ждать стоит всегда. Я тоже жду, не дождусь, когда я снова вернусь в Россию. Пару лет назад я играла концерт в Петербурге. Надо сказать, что на этот год, на 18-й год, был запланирован действительно гастрольный тур по России. 5-7 городов были в плане, но, к сожалению, в связи с тяжелой экономической ситуацией, с санкциями в России эм, этот тур не состоялся. Во всяком случае, он был перенесен пока на неопозримый срок. Вот. Но я очень сильно надеюсь и буду-буду рада, если таки Россия потихоньку начнет выкарабкиваться из этой ситуации и будет возможность снова это возобновить, посмотрим. Может быть, в следующем году, может быть, в 2020 году нам удастся реализовать такие, организовать концерты в России. Буду очень рада, во всяком случае, буду очень рада видеть вас, познакомиться лично. Спасибо вам огромное за комментарии, которые вы присылаете. Огромное спасибо за внимание, за то, что отслеживаете. Мне очень приятно и всегда очень рада слышать от вас. Окей. Um, so another question from James. How much does it cost to make videos? Are all Belarusian women as beautiful as you? Um, thank you. Yes, they are. They are also beautiful. Um, how much does it cost to make videos? A lot. A lot because um, the video or the result, the, the, the ready video, is more or less result of many, 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 many hours of work. And it's not only work of mine in the, in the sense that I sit down in front of the microphone and make a recording. It's only the very small part. Each video, each piece should be prepared before. And some pieces you can prepare in a few weeks. For some pieces you need a year or even years to be able to, to get them on the level or to get the quality I want to have. No, because always I try to be very perfectionistic and I don't like to put any half-ready videos or something like that. And um, many, many different kinds of music, many pieces, they need a lot of time. And it's not only time where you practice technique, it's time where the piece aged. No? It needs time as, as a good wine or as a good cheese. It needs time. 
none and how you hear it today it's not how you will hear it in in two months it's not the 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 same quality is not the same deepness of the music so because of that, there comes first a very big, big, big section, a very long time section where I prepare the piece, starting with scores, reading and working on technique and then musicality and then it needs age and um, then it should be played in the concert and then it aged again and then I made some preparation recording and then I listen to them and correct and adapt. So it takes a lot of time and then, of course, come the time for the recording, for the audio recording. And um, I have um, a very, very good team, a small team that consists only of one single person, but who, um, who does everything you saw, Yevgeny Yolans, in the, in the credits of the video. He's my um, sound engineer and video engineer. And then comes, of course, a lot of time of Yevgeny because he makes all the audio recording and video and video settings. And we need to, we need to find the right, the right atmosphere, the right place where we want to make uh, the video. Sometimes it also... Not sometimes, the most of the time, uh, you need to rent this venue to, to be able to make a video. So you need to pay for, um, for being able to record, to, to make a video there. And then it takes many, many hours to record just one piece um, to get all the different positions and all the different cameras. And um, then you go home with this radio result, with this raw result, and you need to cut it, you need to, to, to put video together. And um, Yevgeny creates also an atmosphere in the video. It means it's a very, very creative process. It's not just like sitting and cutting different pictures together, but it's also creative work that also need to age and it also need time and you come back again and again to this video and you change something and then you do it again. So to answer your question, it's a really very long process. Because of that, don't wonder if you don't see each month an absolutely new video of mine on uh, YouTube because as I said, we want to keep the quality. We have very, very high quality and we want to keep this high quality and to be able to do it, it takes time. It takes time and it takes money. But we are absolutely happy to do it. We enjoy it so much. And you know, with the support of our wonderful patrons, um, it works much, much better and um, easier for us. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, um, there is a question from Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. So how is the life of the guitar player without teaching? Is that really possible? Very good question. <laughs> Very interesting question. Exciting question. Um, the life of guitar player without teaching. It's challenging. Um, and it means that you need to get enough money of, from your concerts, from your, for, from your performance work, so you can pay all the bills, pay apartment, electricity, have something to eat and so on. Um, so it could mean that either you need to have incredible many, many concerts and you need to go from one concert to another one to be able to earn this money for living. Um, or you try to create something, something bigger and you need to enrace your um your fees your concert fees so you maybe don't need to play 400 concert but maybe only 200 or maybe 100 
to, to be able to cover the same or to get the same amount of money. Of course, teaching, teaching in general, it's some kind of, uh, some kind of security, you know. Uh, I think you don't need to do it if you don't like to teach. It's something that will not, do, will not be good for you. And it's something that will be absolutely not good for your students. If you have a teacher who hates to teach, uh, better change the teacher. Um, so in my case, I love to teach. I absolutely love to teach. I enjoy it so much, but I also love to play concerts. And for myself, I um, answered that I don't do only one of that. I need both teaching and performances, concerts. So I com try to combine them. Sometimes not so easy, but uh, yeah, it works. It works quite well. Um, another, you know, now there are also some possibilities how you can earn some money or to get some support, financial support, also using um, using internet, uh, using um, YouTube. But in YouTube, it's actually yeah, very, 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 very small amount uh, that you can get. Um, there are also CD sales that could bring you probably something or such campaign as Patreon, where uh, great people around the world can support your creative life, can support your music. That is something that helps absolutely to, um, to many creators and something that saves also our lives and help us to make music so actually there are many possibilities how some possibilities how you can get your life as guitar player without teaching but in my opinion as more different uh, legs so to say you have as as better it could be or as more safe you can be um There is a short question from Tio, Tio Paul. Greetings, Tiana. Thank you for your beautiful music. Thank you. I love how interactive you are and the insight you provide on technique preferences, opinion and performance. Thank you so much. Um, will we perform in US soon? We are planning some concert food for 2020. I think it was the talk was about spring 2020 so I hope very much that at this point it will work and of course all the updates uh, they will be also on my homepage and um, on social media so take a look I hope very much it it will come uh, so we have some oh we have so many questions that is so great that is absolutely, absolutely great. Uh -huh. uh, so there is one important question from Vic, Vic Yomi. Hi, my name is Victor. I'm from Mexico. I recently had an injury to my left hand. Ooh. I'm right-handed. Now I'm better, but my question is, what exercises can I play to continue with my recovery? Um, Victor, is, I'm, first of all, I'm very, very sorry that you had injury in the left hand and it's one of the worst thing that could happen to each musician, also to just normal human, but especially for us musicians, it's something really, really hard. So I hope very much that you will recover completely soon and you will get much better and you can play completely and normally as usual. I wish you so much. Um, at the point where you get, get any kind of injury, it doesn't matter if it's left, right or something else. The most important thing is that you know exactly why did it happen. It's really important because only then you are able to avoid the repetition of this uh, injury and um, you can save 
your hands and you can be able to continue with the music. So unfortunately, it's not 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 a very nice thing. It's very serious thing. So if you um, if you didn't know now exactly what was the reason for your injury, please please. I can only recommend you take your time, um, take any information you can get to to understand what was wrong and why did it happen. As soon as you know it, try to avoid. There are sometimes special movements in the left hand. Sometimes maybe it could be the wrong position of the left hand. Like it stays too much like this or like that, that you get a lot of tension. Sometimes it could be that, that you press too much. And because of that, you were so much, uh, so much power in your left hand, and it's um, overloaded, so to say. So maybe you need to do something with the with the pressure to release pressure to relax it a little bit more. Maybe it's the strained position of the fingers. Maybe they are too curved, or just you need to take a look. Maybe it's also sometimes it's the position of the thumb behind the fret that can cause also many muscles problems and then um, about exercises how it can play to continue anyway when you recover you need first of all first of all avoid the movement that caused this problem so it's first an absolutely important thing doesn't matter what you play you need to avoid the special position or movement that caused your injury then not don't play or don't practice for a longer time you need to do very short sections sometimes also depend how how serious your injury was sometimes it may be only one or two minutes section and then you need to make a break um, for a longer time or maybe you are able to play 10 minutes or half of an hour and then to make break it's also very very personal Um, of course never play never practice especially now Till you feel the pain. If you feel, feel the pain, stop completely, immediately. No, don't think it will get better. Hmm? Just interrupt your practicing. And then exercises also depends what kind of problem you had with your left hand. You know, it's very difficult to, to co- recommend something because I don't see you, I don't see how you play, I don't know what exactly was the problem. But any any soft exercises where you don't have any extreme angles, where you don't need to use uh, a lot of power, for example, like barre. Uh, something moderate, no? very, very less from your 100 per- possible percent. Try to, to move yourself to practice only in the, in the lowest 10 or 20 until your hand get completely good and get better. Yeah, but be very, very, very careful. It's really not a nice thing when it happens. Um, um, there is also one question from Mark. Hi, Mark. Um, which is your favorite concert hall where you have played? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, um, it's probably not the concert hall, but it's combination. Sometimes if the concert hall is perfect, but the audience is a little bit strange, uh, <laughs> you don't feel so much love to the concert hall anymore or the way around. Sometimes the concert hall is awful, but the audience is so nice and so open hearted that you forget the hall and you just enjoy the concert. But um, I like to play in very often in the churches because they you have a very beautiful acoustic for the guitar. The guitar sound they are especially especially nice. Not in each church, but in many churches, it's the case. I also liked a lot uh, the concert hall in South South Korea in Seoul. It was absolutely amazing hall with a wonderful acoustic and everything was absolutely professional made and it was really a big joy to play there. Of course, um, it was was 
also a very great experience to play in Glocke in Bremen. It's some kind of our Carnegie Hall. But here in Bremen, um, also very nice, um, very nice concert hall. Um, the last time, for example, last um, two solo concerts in in Spain, in Valencia, in Palau de la Musica. It was also a great, great experience, wonderful concert hall. And um, in Benevento, in Italy, um, very, very interesting construction, combination of an old, old building, old church with the many modern elements. So it looked amazing. It looked amazing. It sounded very, very well. And it was a really great joy to play there. Um, um, so, oh, 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 I see we are already running out of the time. So maybe I go very fast through um, the question. Maybe I can pick one, one question um, to end with. Um, just, oh, yo, 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 there are so many. Ah, uh, there are so many, so many, so many, so many. Um, maybe this one. Carol to bull to bill. <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to, to read the name. Um, hey, I wanted to ask you uh, to ask, do you have any advice on how to improve the technique of third finger on the right hand? When I try to play faster, the joint nearest to the nail go backwards when I hit the string. Um, now we need to clear what exactly do you mean under third finger? Do you mean, mean the middle finger? Because usually it is one, two, three, or do you mean the A finger as a, as a third finger? It depends, but actually um, the, um, how you can improve the technique. First of all, you need to do many exercises um, using this finger. So it depends which one do you mean, if it's M or if it's A. So you take the combination of two fingers where you can start with this weak finger. And um, the join goes backwards. If you mean this movement, no? Like the join doesn't stay like that, but it goes Backwards. It's not such a big problem. It's a very, very natural and it's normally. Of course, it shouldn't be somehow extremely a lot. No, there should be some kind of stability in the finger, but you don't need to take to take care. And you don't need to try that your finger stays always like that. When we play, we don't play like this. We put the finger, press, and and then release it. So the joint goes backwards no so it's it's not a big problem you don't need to to avoid or to do something special against it if you notice it's too much it's like extremely your finger is doing the movements from this to that then it's too much and then you need to um to to strength the muscles a little bit more and for this case all the scales coordination exercises exercises over one over the first and second string for example also for my warm-up ask tatiana there are a lot of these exercises uh, that you can use and then you take the couple where you use this finger and the same story you can play it with the accent for example you take the couple a and m you start with the a and then you make always an accent with the a it will also make your finger um, get a little bit more power and independent and then the muscles will be able to hold your joint a little bit better when you play. So my dear, I'm very, very, very sorry. The time went once again so fast and um, it was uh, absolutely amazing um, to hang out 
once again with you and uh, to be able to answer your question. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you so much for your interest. We have today um, um, our last session before before Christmas time and Christmas is coming just in a few few days. It will be so far. So I wish you a merry, merry, merry Christmas to you and to your families, to your friends, to your dearest people. And I wish you an absolutely wonderful next year, 2019. Hope for much you will stay healthy and wealthy and happy and you will enjoy the music and you will get many, many absolutely amazing moments in next year. I'm already looking very much to, to the next year and um, just a very short um, thing for the next year. No, for this year. Next week, next Friday, there will be a new episode on YouTube of Ask Tatiana, no, our regular um, sessions. And this time the topic will be Barre. There were so many questions also at last um, Ask Tatiana Live. You asked me how can I improve my barrel, what I need to do to get it a little bit better and so on and so far. So we made a special episode on this topic. Hope very much it will help you and will be interesting. So next Friday, don't miss Ask Tatiana with Barre. And we will do once again a premiere on YouTube. This is a new function, uh, quite a funny function. There will be set it. You will see, um, you will get notification. By the way, to get the notification, you need to press the bell button. Don't forget when you go on my channel and there is um, the subscribe button. Near that, you will see a bell. If you press there, you will get notification about my new videos if I upload something new. So you will not miss it. And next Friday, we will make a premiere. It means in a set time, the video will come out. And at this time, during the video goes, maybe even 10, 15 minutes before, there will be chat, there will be live chat. Um, and um, I will be there and um, we can also chat a little bit and um, exchange and I can say hello to you. So next Friday, next episode of Ask Tatiana and the first Friday of January, I think it will be, I'm not sure what it will be, 4th, maybe 4th, 4th of January, there will be a practicing live once again, my live practicing where you will see how I practice, what I practice, which difficulties do I have and if I have any, how many I have and how I work on them, how I overcome them um, you can see this all the stuff um, on patreon patreon.com slash tatiana there will be a live practicing session of mine and then of course in next month will be new ask tatiana live also on the third friday of the month and I'm looking forward to see you there. So thank you once again. Thank you so much for being there. I hope very much you will have a wonderful evening or day, night, morning, what time you have right now. And um, take care of you. Stay healthy. And um, see you by the next Ask Tatiana Live. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. <laughs>